Hello friends, so today we're going to talk about the NS batch update request of core data which was introduced in iOS 8. So let's create a new project. I'll name as core data batch request. Make sure the use core data checkbox is checked and click on next. Go to desktop and I'll save it. I'll go to the XE data model very fast and I'll create a simple entity student and it will have two attributes one is student name which will be of type string and another one is student roll number which will be of type, let's say integer 64 so there is a common file name same declaration error in swift 3 for the core data so in order to fix that i'll go to entity i'll go to class i'll go to the module here and i will just select current product module and manual none for the code gen I'll click on editor create NS manage objects of classes next next for the student go to our project and I will create here so in order to check I'll just build a project to see everything is fine everything is okay I will not requiring any did receive memory warning method here so I'll delete that First, I'll import core data. Then, let's take the app delegate instance UI application shared delegate as app delegate. Now, there are some changes for the core data uh, in Swift 3 uh, in the app delegate code. So, we have now uh, only a persistent container and we don't have any kind of manage object context so we have to fetch the manage object from this persistent uh, container so let context equals to I'll copy this dot persistent container dot view context so this will be our context Let's make a insert function which will insert some of the entries in core data and I will insert 50,000 entries for the student like student and as entity description insert new object for entity name and entity name is student context is context as student student dot student name I will keep the student name as date the current date and I will keep the student dot student roll number as the default serial number that will be one to fifty thousand finally I will be just saving the uh, content so in order to see the content of the coordinator I'll just print the path where actually the core data is residing by using the persistent containers persistent store descriptions method the property and I'll call the insert function so this will give the path where uh, the SQL file will be made and I will be using the SQLite manager of Firefox add-on which you can just go to uh, the Firefox and just download the add-on from it so let's run this project I'll just insert it 1 to 50,000 records for the student so here we go so the records are inserted I'll stop the build and here's the path users up to application support and we have a code data batch request dot uh, SQLite file made for us so there is an add-on here you can just type the SQLite manager and you'll find the add-on just install that add-on now I will select the database and the sh I'll, on clicking this little icon just to select database I'll click on I'll uh, uh, use the command shift G uh, go to folder shortcut command command shift G and I'll go to application support and here I come so I have this uh, student data 50,000 and the name of the students are the current date now we don't require these now we don't require any insert function 
and we, I will update these records by batch and by normal update and I'll tell you the difference by comparing the memory and the time. So first let us make a function current time millis it will return the time in milliseconds for us and date dot time interval since 1970 multiplied by 1000 because it returns seconds and int 64 perfect now I will write a method update and another method update with batch so let's do a simple update first let request ns fetch request student and student sorry student dot fetch request and this will be our ns fetch request let search results equals to try it will be in the do block uh, context dot fetch request and fetch request is request I have to keep this in do try block and do to catch block and here I will be having the student array student in search results so you can see in the search results we have the student array and we doesn't have to typecast it uh, which we used to do in Swift 2 now I will just change the name of student dot student name to let's say Rajan and finally I will save the context now before executing the fetch request I will just grab a start time and it will be current time millis and after saving I will just print the difference of the time and the difference of the time will be difference is uh, get current time millis uh, sorry this is the method current time millis I'm sorry current time millis minus start so this will be the difference now just run the project once to see oh uh, sorry I'll have to call this update method uh, I'll call this in view reload. So let's do a update here. Okay, there's a problem here. Oh, this is a method actually. Let's run and see. I'll go to this section where it will show the memory. See. It took around 64, 58.2 MB of memory and the difference is 1298 uh, milliseconds. So near about more than one second. And you can see the memory 58.1 MB is used. Now I'll just refresh the database and you'll see all the student name changed to Rajan. Okay, now I'll do the same thing with update with batch. So let's create a request. NS batch request and entity name as student and uh, request dot properties to update so these are the properties which you need to update or we need to pass an array of properties so the property name should be the same as given the class student name and I will just change this name to Rajan Maheshwari my full name and request dot the result type should be sorry updated objects count result type or something yeah we will use this updated objects count result type it will return the, the number of objects uh, which are updated 
catch do try catch because the context dot execute function of this will also uh, in, uh, throws and also throws the context dot execute request and the request will be the request and I will type cast this as ns batch update result fine I'll print the result result dot result so this will show the uh, the number of rows updated I'll take the same here I will just take a start here I'll just take a difference here and now in place of Rajan we will see Rajan Maheshwari in all the columns and I'll just call update with batch and you can see the difference in the memory the memory portion is selected here and now this portion will be called the difference is 135 milliseconds and the memory usage is 22.4 mb significant you know uh, drastic change when uh, we were using normal update let's do it again and you can see uh, these this is changed to rajan maheshwari now so I'll, I'll again change back to rajan sorry I'll use the normal update you can see the memory difference here this is the normal update the memory it uses is 58.2 and the difference is 1 to 72 milliseconds so it means around more than one second and all the records are now updated back to Rajan and I'll do the same thing with batch and as batch request run the project again and all the columns will be now Rajan here and you can see the memory difference the memory difference is 22.5 from 55 MB and the difference is just 67 milliseconds so how fast it is and all the records are updated back to Rajan Maheshwari so you can see the memory difference and also the significant difference of the two uh, seconds when two milliseconds when the request was started and it ended so this is all about NS batch request uh, see in this update what happens first it grabs or pulls from DB then it updates then again write back to DB but in case of uh, update with batch uh, NS batch update request what it do it uh, just uh, directly talks to the persistent coordinator just like we used to change the values in RDBMS and th thousand and fifty thousand rows are changed within seconds so it just talks to persistent coordinator and directly changes the values there so the NS batch update request is obviously recommended if you are changing a lot of data so, so you can see the difference of the memory and the, the execution time also so it's perfect for you know large records uh, any suggestions or any comments you can just leave as comments in this video uh, thank you thank you so much for watching this tutorial